Now rubber is a type of material called an elastomer and if you load it with a certain force and you can measure the extension, what we can look at is the loading and then the, the extension as it's unloaded. And what you might find when you do it yourself is that if you get a rubber band, first of all it's quite hard to pull, then it's easier and then at the end it becomes a bit harder again. And in fact what we can do is we can plot this on a stress strain graph. And what we find is as we load it, we get a curve that looks a bit like this. So it's hard, easy, then hard to pull. And this is as we are loading it. However, as we take the masses off, what we find is it follows a curve a bit like this. Now this is called a hysteresis loop. And the area inside this is equal to the energy stored per unit volume as you're actually pulling that rubber and then letting it go again. And rubber is a great example of a material that doesn't obey Hooke's law, which means that the stress isn't directly proportional to the strain. Why is that? Well, if we think about what the, the actual structure of rubber is, what we have are these kind of uh, basically unaligned and tangled long, kind of long molecules together. And in unstretched rubber, they look a bit like this. Now, as you initially apply a force, what it's doing is it's basically aligning all of this kind of tangled uh, lot of rubber. Once it's all aligned, uh, the middle part of the graph shows it's actually easy to basically pull these long chains all at the same time. And at the end, you've got these unaligned and unraveled kind of things. And it's really hard to get them to kind of stretch any further. So it's really due to the kind of the long chain uh, polymers that you have inside rubber. So what this really means is if you have some rubber and you pull it, we can't really see a change in temperature. So if we th switch to a thermal camera, we can now see that as you pull this rubber band back and forward many, many times, it's actually storing energy and the rubber increases in temperature. You can see exactly the same if you look at uh, car tyres. If you look at, uh, so here's my car here, and this is before I've driven it and the tyres are quite cold. However, when I've uh, driven it for a while, what you can see is actually not only do the brake discs actually heat up, but the rubber increases in temperature as well. So if we think about what the car tyre is actually doing, as the car's driving along, the bottom is being compressed and extended many times as it's rotating. So what effectively is happening is that the car tyre is being stretched and compressed, stretched and compressed many, many times per second. And this means that uh, as the rubber goes through a loading and an unloading cycle, we have energy stored, and this energy then is stored as thermal energy. So maybe next time you have a big, long car journey, when the car stops, put your hand on the car tyre at the end, and you should feel that there's some heat there. So... This is a bit about rubber and how that behaves and how different that is to the way that metals behave, the things that obey Hooke's law when they're actually stretched and compressed. Thank you.